for Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to my yarn adventure video. Oh, 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 itchy eye. Um, missing mail, make alongs, cows, working on projects without power. It's all a bit of everything today. So I hope you stick around and watch the video and enjoy it and leave some great feedback. So let's get started. So first of all, in November during the Black Friday, I did buy a bit of yarn, but not a lot. And I did buy yarn, and I mentioned it in the video. I bought some cotton from Bendigo Warren Mills because it was marked down from $15 a ball to $11 a ball. And I bought six, or so I thought. Well, five turned up in bits and pieces. And then in December, I'm thinking I'm going nuts here because they've sent me an email saying one's on its way. Well, it never arrived, and I totally forgot about it. I was convinced I must have only bought five. Even though I could have gone back and looked at the invoice, I didn't. Then out of the blue this last week, about Friday, I get an email telling me that they have found out what happened to my ball of yarn that never turned up and they're sending me another one. And sure enough, this week, it turned up from Bendigo. My sixth ball of cotton 10 ply in the colour light teal great customer service because what happened to the one they sent me in December they tracked down it was on an Australia post truck that was stolen they went to all that trouble to track it down find out where it was and then send me another one so that's really great customer service from Benigo Wool Mills big kudos and tick for them to send me that I quite like that teal colour so now I talk about the weather, the wet season, and that we get power failures. And and I use my neck light, and I've got some little LD, L, LD, LED, LED, that's it, lights that are around me. So I've got good lighting when I've got no power, even if it is hot. But I often have to use written patterns. And I can't remember when, but it was towards the end of last year, um, the dabbling hook, Rel on the dabbling hook had a little um, promo where you could win a pat one of her patterns on Instagram and I won it. And I picked the Kalina headband pattern, that one. So during the power failure, or just before, I decided, oh, I could make this. And I was rummaging around and I found fiddlesticks, big, superb big yarn that I bought. This is so beautiful and soft. This is Australian fiddlesticks. I don't know if you get it overseas. It's made in Turkey, 100% um, anti-pilling acrylic. And there's only 80 metres in a ball, being a, a chunky type yarn, which is this needed, and an 8 millimetre crochet hook. So I'm thinking power failure. I can make this. It's a big hook, big yarn. I've got reasonable lighting. So I made it, and I... Loved it and love it. There you go. Because I had a couple of balls that are superb, big, and there I made, I'm not sure if that's not upside down, the cleaner headband. Now, I might have made it a row bigger because that's the way I wanted it. But this is awesome. The foundation chain makes it so it's not too tight on your head. I really like it. And I will be making more of those. But... I learned a new stitch. I learned how to do the camel stitch. I had never done it before. I don't even think I'd seen a pattern with it before. And it was so easy the way she explained it in the pattern that I did it during a power failure. There's going to be life noises. It's like four in the afternoon and people are coming home from work. So, yeah, I made this. Thank you, uh, Rel at the Dabbling Hook. This is an awesome pattern. She has great patterns on her Etsy. So there'll be links to this and others below because I really like this pattern. So, power failures. The other thing is I tend to pick tutorials if I'm doing a tutorial that's got an easy pattern repeat. And I keep saying I'm determined to use some of my stash this year. And I was having a bit of a clean up because I have been using stash yarn. And I came across a yarn I forgot I had which is Ling Crafts Illusion Cotton Cake. I bought quite a few of these. I remember I was buying these when I met my friend Ulia in Lingcraft. And um, 
I'm thinking, oh, well, it's February, Valentine's, love, heart earrings, yes, it's Valentine's. I have to find something to make for this using this yarn. So I knew I didn't have patterns. I went looking at tutorials and I found a bag o' day tutorial, of course, 499. Now, she made it in Ombre Life, but when I do a yarn substitute check, this is very, very similar. It is like cotton and polyester and it says loose four strands that you have to try and keep together when you're crocheting. But I love this pattern and it was so easy to follow. Even when the power went out and I had to go to my necklight because the pattern repeat was so great. Now that is a variegated yarn that just happens to be the darker red left. So that is the pattern and tutorial. It is called Sweet cherry wine it is lovely my question to you is to tassel or not to tassel crystal has tassels on the ends if you go and check out a tutorial you'll see what i mean she puts tassels there and tassels a tassel on the end now i'm not a tassel girl i wouldn't put tassels there but should i put a tassel on the end like down there just something different because i don't normally do it the hardest thing about this pattern is doing the pico edge and it's best not to do it during a power failure. <laughs> you really need to know. And I got really creative because I thought, well, it takes a five millimeter crochet hook. And I thought I would try my Odyssey furls that were sent to me by Crochet Nana, this one. I did do a bit, but it didn't last long. I get I'm really uncomfortable with a fat handle, even though it fits in my hand nice. Probably because I use Clover and Moors all the time. I have like three sets of them. So I stopped using that and went to a Clover and Moor. But yes, Sweet Cherry Wine. This is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And such a great tutorial. So easy to follow. I really like that. But let me know in the comments below, should I put a tassel on it or not put a tassel on it? I'll lay it out and hopefully take a photo so you can check it out properly because I am in the dungeon. There will be life noises, like I said. <sighs> what else is there? My make-alongs and cows that I've entered into. So I joined Setter's Calendar Cow. I showed you my January finished cow. I said I probably wouldn't make a lot of cows, but... I decided I'd do February, I'd do a cowl because I found a cowl on a website um, that used the camel stitch that I'd just learned how to do. So look, I don't know if it's great or very much like her photo, but there it goes. It is called, and I don't know if you can see that up close, the Noughts and Crosses Cowl. So what I did was I used Karen's Simply Soft Purple and then for the Noughts, I combined it with um, Starlight, Moda Vera Starlight, which is a local yarn that's got glitter, the silver. I made the, just to try and make it look like the Alaskan sky in her February picture. So there it is. I quite like it, but Thing reckons it's too big on me, I'm lost. It buries me. If I was to make it again, I probably would make it in a finer yarn and a bit smaller, not so big. Um, it's not overly wide, but maybe a little bit narrower for me. But yeah, I enjoyed making this. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Karen Simply Soft. It splits. It split a little bit, but I've had a lot worse yarns than this. Honestly, I didn't mind it. And this purple yarn has been in my stash for absolutely ever. So it was good to use one of them up. Because the other thing about this pattern is it is a yarn gobbler it does use a lot i think what's in a karen there is um 315 yards at 288 meters in this one of mine and i probably have about 15 yards left of the purple i have quite a bit of the silver left but yeah it did use a lot and there is a slouchy beanie to match this if you wanted to make a matching beanie i do have another skein of the purple so that's possible too. So I could make a set. Now it was on a website site and it's by Crafty for Weeks. 
I will leave a link to the website. I just sat doing the PDF pattern off the laptop. There is a pattern for sale with all the ads and everything, but there's a ad-free pattern you can buy on. I think it's Ravelry, dirt cheap if you want it. And I may go and buy it because I'm thinking I should get the cow, um, the hat pattern and actually pay for it because that would have been a lot of work. There's quite a bit of work and different stitching in that cow to put it together. So that was my make-alongs and um, cows that I've entered. There is one more. I nearly forgot. So earlier this last week, I was watching Kitty Mum and she mentioned her Amy cow or Amy make-along for the year. And that's Amy Gurumi. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I sort of went, oh, I'm not very good at Amy Gurumi. But my mission this year was to challenge myself and try and improve my skills. Hence, I learned the camel stitch. So I thought I'd join her amigurumi, backdate it to January, and I've made January's. Now, no judgment, please, because me, in my wisdom, thought, well, I'll just make something small and see how I go. It looks fairly simple. And my son picked the tutorial for me. So I made, and he's going to spin because he's on a key ring, a crewmate for Among Us. And I decided I was going to make 12 of them in the colours of the birthstone make-along. So this was garnet. Now, this wasn't easy because Sausage Fingers doesn't like small things. And yeah, if I was to make another one, I'm going to make them bigger. But there he is, January, Penny, a kitty mum. January's Amy. I haven't named him. He's Mr Garnet. He's a crew member of Among Us. My son... Um, who picked out the tutorial and I've forgotten to written down who it was with. I'll leave it in the description below. Said if you put those on key rings for your next charity market, you will sell a lot of them. So I might perfect my skills at making them on a bigger one and then make some more smaller ones. But there you go, my second make-along that I've entered. Which brings you to the birthstone make-along that I'm running for the year. And I gave you February's colours, purple family, yellow family and dark grey. There have been so many great pictures and we're now up to 50 participants. More people have come on board because I said you could start later as long as you did a colour from each month. I'm not that strict about when you can join and when you can't. So, I mean, enjoying watching the photos of the different colours people have used and how they've used them and to date and it's only what February the 10th here in Australia purple is the most popular colour but very closely followed by yellow so it'll be interesting when we get to the end of the month to see which is the most popular colour now a few people stress over posting their photos each month don't because like some people joined in February and posted a photo showing their January and February colours. Please don't stress over posting your photos. Post them when you can. Because I look at, if you lay it out properly, I can look at the colours you've used. Like I can work out red for January, you know, because I know the colours I have nominated. And the only reason I want photos is one, to promote the make-along and two, to be determine what colour yarn I will buy at the end of each month to go in the prize pack. So please don't stress over posting your pictures and, and getting all, it's supposed to be fun and relaxing. So I thought I'd show you mine because I'm doing the V-stitch lap gown. And then I started making Among Us in birthstone colours. But here you go. I made the eight rows in the January dark red. And like a lot of people, I got creative with the yellow and purple. So I did two rows of yellow, four rows of purple and two rows of yellow. And that broke it up with the red. I thought that was really great. And yeah, I like that. And a lot of people have done that. And other people have done it different ways. But yeah, most people are using purple, closely followed by yellow. And kudos to those people who use dark grey or grey because it's a very lifeless colour. But as Marianne at Runaway Red said in a live today, greys are really good, like a pop colour. I think Christopher from Secret Yarnery always talks about having a white or a cream or a colour 
that pops your other colours. And grey does that with such dark colours that we're using at the moment. So there you go. So the furls hook, I did try it on this because this was a 5mm crochet hook to see if it was, you know, the thin yarn. But I've decided my muscle memory for clovers is so ingrained and they're so much narrow in the handle that um, I could change to Phil's Odyssey, but it be, wouldn't be cost effective because I have three sets of Clover Amours, which aren't cheap. So I've now decided my Phil's prize hook that I won will go to a home where it is loved and cherished and used to someone who really likes Phil's hooks. Because I would rather see it used than just lie idle in my crochet hook drawer. Because I think other than consciously using it, I don't think I'd use it. And I don't want to change over to hooks because it would be too expensive. So in summary, guys, my um, thank you to everyone who gave such positive feedback on my Tea Cozy tutorial and the launch of my Tea Cozy tutorial and pattern. To those people who purchased the pattern, which is a fundraiser for Sharon's Crochet Corner GoFundMe page, seven people bought the pattern, which is awesome. That's so far. And, um, yeah, hopefully we'll make a bit of money I can donate at the end of the month to Sharon's Crochet Corner. Um, I didn't expect to sell a lot of patterns because it is a knitted tea cosy. But because it was well received and I got great positive feedback, I got thinking about a crochet tea cosy tutorial and possibly using the camel stitch because now I'm addicted to the camel stitch but there you go it's been a lot of fun this week it's Wednesday and I've got the night off cooking because I've come home from work and things said I'll cook tonight it's been raining it's been miserable and he's probably bored so he's going to cook and I can go and sit have a cup of tea crochet, knit and relax. Maybe watch a bit of TV. Guys, thank you to all those loyal subscribers who keep coming back and giving me such positive reinforcement. To you new guys, I hope you go back and watch some of the um, other videos of my yarn adventures. It'd be great if you could. And consider, because a couple joined today, starting the make-along. Come and join us in the birthstone make-along. You can catch up and there's no limit as to when you can start. <sighs> That's it. A bit long for me. Till next time, make sure you take care of each other. Stay safe and have one crafty day. Maybe even crafting an amigurumi for the Ami along with Kitty Mom Penny. Hope you're not disappointed, Penny. He is a bit small. Until next time, bye for now.